All right, stand up Vanguard. Ooh, we're gonna see Shoujo Doji against Luard. Perfect, sweet. This is exactly what I wanted to see. I think the world needs to know about the power of the Bozo. Sorry, the Prozo. He's graduated from his Bozo Doji days. He is now, he's a Prozo Doji. Let's go Doji. Gozo Doji, that's right. All right, Luard player looks to be going first, which is, I mean, good for the Luard player. You technically, um, if you let Shoujoji go first, you're gonna get melted. And this is looking to be the stall build of Luard that I featured in the top 10 recently. Ditches the Empress Seden in here, rides into grade one Shoujo Doji. Gonna get the energy crest, get the three energy immediately. And then you can choose to resolve between the going second draw and the Shoujo Doji top five. Gonna do the Shoujo Doji top five first. Find two stealths, one goes to bind, one goes to soul. So this is a good time to find your first copies of like um, uh, Tsukiyodachi, if that's his name. Oh, the Great One, yes. That card is absolutely cracked. Gonna put the PG into, you can put the PG in, into Bind Zone as well, actually. It's not too bad because you can then defend with it later down the line, but. but so this new Grade One here, let me just put up the name. I forgot the name of him. Kinran, Kinran. So it puts the Kinran in the Bind Zone and the Kinran is really, really good because it's basically your big extender. It procs a lot of your other effects. Ooh, we see the, uh, Omon Sake. He'll actually have a bottle of Omon in the back there. I got it gifted by by the people that sell it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, gonna use the three energy here immediately to draw a card from the Biscotti. Let's see if there's any interesting spice in this. Uh... Ooh, the main. We don't see that every day. Pretty good draw two here, but do you have the call targets? We see all in the main, and we also see the uh, the Dior wing here for spamming the. Spamming PGs. Let's see what he's cooking. I saw another Lord player on stream uh, earlier was playing the new Grey 2 triple rare from set 3. Yeah, they discarded a card. So from what I understood, at least the way that the, the Minerva order is written in English is that you have to either call 2 or discard 2. You can't do one, one discard 1 call. Am I wrong? The way it's written in Japanese is it, it sounds like you you have to either call or discard. But then as a, I did run into someone that like was like, can I do one one discard one call? And I was like, I don't the way it's written, I don't think so. You do as much as possible. I see. You choose two and you either call or discard it. Okay. So you just choose the two cards, one call, one discard. Okay, good to know. That's um I think the way it's worded in Japanese makes it seem like uh why not call it? He can't, he's great too. Ooh, it's Gyodachi picked up. That's huge. So he chose to damage tonight the Shoujo Doji, which I think is correct. Um, but not. So damage denying grade two turn means that you're not letting them top five for Iniza Sao. And then Iniza Sao gets to look at top five for the um to find any stealth to put to hand. So now Lord's going to ride up. Surely here you don't do the. You don't go for the damage deny anymore. Because I feel like. Unless you can farm up a big hand, for Shoujo to do four attacks, they don't need CB. But to do beyond four attacks, they do. So, let's see where this goes. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna go for the three attacks here. Swinging Vanguard first, it's just a 13. I don't think you can afford to, no, to guard this, because if they just pass after that, you're in trouble. So you want this one damage. Oh, T, you don't want that. Uh, you get the... Well, you're gonna be working with zero damage here no matter what. That's actually quite surprising, but you gotta roll with the punches. It's pretty huge. Could have given it to the King Run. That's true. That might have been the play. You might have wanted to give the OT power to the Grade 1 to at least tempt them to swing rears. But they probably would just pass. I think at that point you just pass against Shoujo Doji. Why would you give them resources, right? So I don't think it necessarily made a choice. A, a big I don't think it made an actual difference, but Remu probably could have um been invited to not, you know. Oh, it's good. Actually, goes to Soul. So that went to Soul from the Grid One's effect. Yeah, that OT is a very happy sight for the Luar player for Mr. Remu. Definitely very huge. Shoujo can still do quite a bit this turn. It just sucks because we can see an Isasawa in hand that's been kind of waiting to be used. This is also okay. You can deck thin. Uh, top five. Put one to hand. Uh, sorry, put one to Soul from the Ogijishi. Pretty good. What we're gonna put in? 
Got quite a lot of options. Saw the counter charger, another Ogijishi. Throughout the stream, I will learn all the stealth names. That's like, I played the deck too, but I haven't really bothered to memorize the names of all the, the stealth guys. We still have the Energy Blast 3 to put three stealths from Soul to Bind here. So you can set up your bind. And the other good thing is that you're able to also set up your field for any defensive use as well. Ooh, look at that! Just loop it! Damn, alright, already set up two Tsukiodachis. You know that that damage is going to be huge. So this turn for Josh, I think you want to just basically be pushing as much as possible. So try to get them to four damage so that your combo turn next turn is like as lethal as possible. So if you can do that, you're in very, very good position. But that does depend on quite a few, you know, quite a few factors. Soul charge into Unpreceden, yeah, right? You can just call the Unpreceden from the Chojo as well, and you're absolutely fine. Yeah, you're buying the grade 2 Obscur uh, not Obscur <laughs> the grade 2 Shoujo Doji. Grade 1 Shoujo Doji as well. Not sure if you have enough soul for that. And then gonna buy in two Rearguard Circles and a card from hand. Gonna be the Morfessa. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna get touched. Um... Unless you call a... If you call an Izasao just to remove the cards and bind, it feels a bit wasteful. So I'd rather wait till you have the CB to use Izasao in full. Um, just because you're not generating hand advantage, so you might just get like... I mean, you're at zero damage, so you're safe next turn, but... You don't want to get got by um, just the game snowballing in the Luard player's direction. Missile Blast. Another... Skiodachi, because you only need two. You don't need more than two usually, so you're you're fine there. Thoughts on already getting Stokia Divine Unit so soon? I'm not that surprised. He's like the main guy. That's like if we didn't see Rezile in episode three or whatever it was. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty decent turn despite the zero CB. And you're also gonna get to generate some soul here. Do you have a persona to get back from drop? Otherwise, the only target is the Tsukiodashi. Yeah, the only target is Tsukiodashi here. And then it comes down to what's going to be called here. Most likely... Okay. I'm going to be putting the um, Vanguard Booster. And then calling the uh, the Unpreceden, which will get the Soul Boss 1 to draw a card effect. Together with the King Run, that will also allow you to reuse... Yeah, Kingdom is being used quite early, but you can keep looping the resource. And as long as the Kingdom in the back here stays on the board, it's fine, which it should. So, the Vanguard column should only be 13k, but the last column is 31, which is pretty good. Um, all things considered, that this is a zero kind of last turn. And I think if you're a Remu, ooh, no guarding. Persona Rad found, that's huge as well. Gets the crit up to three damage here, but. 31, gonna be just 10k guard, gonna block that. So I didn't manage to push to 4, but pushing to 3 is good enough because next turn you can essentially do... With double Tsukiodachi, you could do rear rear, put a column in. But he put the... Um, he used the Kinnan there, which I'm not too sold on. So you could basically go like rear rear and then eat that with the Kinnan to proc your first Tsukiodachi, swing with Tsukiodachi, then Vanguard swing, put the two front rows remaining call two and then that can get you another Tsukiyodachi so you get one two three four five six seven you could do seven attacks this turn I think whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just trying to watch the game dude what what is this <laughs> commercial break already what what happened there all right we're back we're back you didn't miss too much looks like they uh we had a stride into the drag driver, set up the solemn clout, got a Morfessa in here, so Remu's Remu's big chillin'. Pretty good so far. And I think if you're ooh, the heal down to two is nasty. That's actually very annoying for Josh. Very good for Remu though. So for Josh, you want as much CB here as possible, so you're probably just eating all these attacks. Persona ride in damage is not too bad because you already um found one persona. So as long as you have one Persona, you can kind of just loop it with the Kinnan, as long as you have the Kinnan to keep uh, keep looping your Personas. Yeah, you're going to take that second damage, get the draw trigger too. You really don't mind taking all this damage, because that just gives you more attacks. You might even be cool to going to three. Yeah, so you already used two Kinnan, but you can get one back here. Because um, you can get to... You have, your, you have two of them in soul. You can bind both of them. 
and then you immediately get to call that off of the shoujo doji so you're getting to use one here persona right coming in i just want to see you need the unprecedented to soul blast out your uh, persona right here okay gonna use cb1 for the Isasao here if you can find a perfect guard off of this that'd be pretty good as well just for dealing with the scaling of the luard crest i do see a pg so that's an easy target unless you find another what else would you want more than a pg here if you already have a pg in hand probably kinanon i guess kinanon just enables all your combos so it's quite good yeah kinanon picked up number three very good we like that we like that which round is this round three of nine today bozo being good brings tears to my eyes it's very good Okay, puts the kingdom behind these as well. It's the counter charger. Yep, unprecedented. Very good. You want to call unprecedent though. I feel like you want to call the unprecedent from the shoujo doji effect this turn. All right, so I'm gonna put kingdom, unprecedent, and PG to bind. So that sets up your call targets, and then he's also gonna probably set up board in order to have a defensive play potentially. So that's probably gonna be just two Tsukiyodachis. Which is fine if they don't get taken out before that. That's the tricky part. If they start swinging to your rears and that's your only two rears that you have to put into soul for Shodoji's uh, when attacked effect, then it's a little bit like, okay, when do I give this up, right? So I do think that Remu probably will just go swing face next turn most most of the time because uh, the scaling from the stride crest will be pretty good, especially if they go for drag driver still next turn. They can just do, like if they have, um, if they have two CB, they can do five attacks if they don't use large stride skill if they do then they'll need three which is a bit excessive all right is this how effects it's time to touch the bind zone a little bit the 5k as well thinking about the targets at the end of the day i feel like uh all right target more fessa go to bot deck goodbye and then skill that cb1 call that out no defensive scene yet, so there's going to be a 25k swing off of the Tsukiyodachi on its own, if you want to do that. And now, yeah, I'm going to say that gets the plus 10k too, so this is going to be coming in with the the 25. 25k will be, so 15k will guard that, and then this is 23. Oh, this is what, 41? It's pretty, pretty impressive. Yep, put the two attackers into the salt. You have double counter charge as well here, so if they don't hit defensives, you could just like kind of hard commit here for the uh for the big big swings all right so here well i'm trying to all oh, right so he's resetting the um, skill dashi here then gonna use the effect to call it out immediately i like this then you use the counter charger here since two things were placed you get to counter charge one still gives the power to another pg picked up that's pretty good on four damage for remu and actually no defensive that's actually pretty bad so now, yeah, you're looking at Remu sort out his hand. He's like, all right, let's find these PGs. So this is going to be... God, that unprecedented is huge. So yeah, here you only need... You're only going to call the one last attack because you only have the one CB. So you can get back Persona Ride because you soul blasted for the unprecedented. So the King Nun will get the Persona Ride back for next turn. So it's like Arkite and Shoujo are the exact same where it's like they need one copy of their Persona Ride and they can loop it the entire game. Five damage, still no defensives. So now, Unprecedent is going to be a 38. But then on top of that, we get back the Persona Ride. And then, you get yourself another Tsukiyodachi use. Oh my god, I keep soul charging the Tsukiyodachi, that's huge. Another ride on Kunai. And then CB1 Tsukiyodachi comes out. Another 25k swing, give me another heal trigger please, or crit will do too. And 38. PG will be dropped for it. It's not even the regular PG, just the Elementary Sanctitude. Getting rid of that. And finally back to the Luard player. Man. All right, the Binds one of these goes back to hand. So at least some cards are back. Gonna put two Biscottis back to deck with Luard's uh, Stride Cost effect. And we're gonna go into Drag Driver here. Yeah, so there's both good and bad to this. Um... Dude, the Shoujo Doji player's hand is so huge. Somebody, I think uh, Fushiki Densha in chat said Shoujo Doji reminds him of Time Leap. It really does. The way it cycles through the the the, the resources, especially with the Bind Zone. Binds Zone, wow. We put we put jorts on the Bind Zone. 
the 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 bind zone is um definitely reminiscent of time leap feels good the deck also feels very fun to play it's uh it's fun to like figure out the combos like that also like you know the fact that the column call from Shoji Doji is not the same column you're just back row front row is like you can split it up the way he did last turn too the bind Joan this is the the shouting head emoji certified all right recycle the PG with that freaking um Dior wing very nice we like we like hey tanks what's up my favorite uh disappointing food opinion ever <laughs> wow dude the Luar player's hand is tiny it's actually unfortunate so you effectively here don't actually get that many attacks because you swing with Lord, CB1 call one. So use a lot of resources just to find pieces. Like painkiller is very important here just to um, draw cards. So you get triple drive, you get painkiller. So you'll get, you'll generate four cards. Oof. This is round three currently of nine. But very, very good round, honestly. Both players are playing their decks well, trying to find outs. And I think for the Lord player here, just deck thin. You need to heal down. If you can, we still see like two heals in deck. If you can find one of those. I also think that Remu doesn't play the 10k shield grade one. That would help that card. I think if, if you're expecting Shoujo Doji to be your main matchup, I think it's worth to jam that card back in because it really helps. A lot of Shoujo's uh, numbers are not that huge without Persona Ride, but once they do loop Persona Ride once, you're looking at like 15k shield for a lot of the attacks. So if you can set up like regular Intercept in the Grid 1, at least once per turn you get a basically free 15k shield just from your deck. So it is significant enough, I think. But let's see. This Luar's coming in with 43, if I'm not mistaken. PG. Oh, Biscotti. Draw trigger. Draw trigger, drew into Biscotti, and I think the last card he drew into was a heal. That might actually be enough to survive. This could actually be just enough in terms of the numbers. Oh, I like this. Swing rears. Yeah. Lord player is 100% making the right decision. You swing rear here and just pass. So this way, their only way of uh, doing more than four attacks is uh, ride on kunai. But they have ride on kunai. We know there's one in bind zone, but the only issue is... Uh, Okay, Persona Ride. Is there a Ride on Kunai in that huge hand? If there is, if there is, we're actually quite all right. But yeah, Luard can CC. They they do play turn arm. Unprecedent. Yeah, there's also L. That is true. Trying to see if there's a Ride on Kunai in here. All right, Angel Blast three. Set up the Bind Zone. Gonna be the King Run. Gonna be the Unprecedent. What else we got here? Yeah, the soul's huge. I mean he's used he used Kindan like three times, four times now this game. So it's like tut, 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 just like pairs of two every time. Unprecedent Kindan and Grade 1 Shoujo. Okay. I mean you have a lot of excess soul, so you might as well use it. Oof. I know I talked about the grade one. But when Shoujo binds your rear guard circles, it doesn't really make a big difference, does it? Give us the Solemn Clouts. Yeah, both those ride line, I mean, sorry, Prozo's ride line is very, very good. It's truly, truly Prozo Doji. So, ooh, okay. Gonna call out these Asao here. Of course, without the effect, does it cost Cannon Blast? So, no ride on Kunai. And I think there's no way to get the CC, even if you call. Ooh, double Biscotti, You're gonna use all six energy here to draw two cards. This will keep him going. Finds a CC, that's huge. Lord might actually survive this. So we're gonna get rid of the two cards in bind here. Well, get rid of one card in bind. From the... From, oh, Solemn Clout, bot deck that. We don't want those big attackers out here. With no CB, we don't care about the Morphessa too much, but... Luckily, you can loop your Persona here pretty well. Alright, drew a card from the... Uh, Alright, Twin Drive. Crit! That's pretty important. Let's see here. Well, wow, it's very fitting. 
Very fitting track for, for a Shoujo Doji game. Yeah, <laughs> very fitting music. Alright, this is gonna be 43. So you're looking at... Yeah, drop an extra 5k for this. Ooh, slightly over guarding. And then PG the last one. Luard survives another turn. That's actually huge. Gets back the cards in the bind zone. It's time to look at what you want to put back. I definitely like how Remu's playing because he's also very much aware of the fact that he is, you know, the, the deck that's going to be using up the most time is usually Luard, but he's been making decisions like very snap decisions, very quick um, and seamless. Oh, this is going to be just a three swing big crest power turn. You have to no guard this because I think unless... Because if you don't, if you if you don't uh, take this, they'll just swing rear rear pass. You have another zero CB turn. Oh, the heal is huge though. Heal's down to four. This will give a CB for next turn. Another biscotti and the OT. That's another heal. Effectively another heal. Grabs the heal to hand. Puts the 100 mil on the Morfessa. Blitz Regulus. Oh, that's going to be still just rear rear. Even with 100 mil, doesn't matter. Rear rear. Down to three damage is so much more important than anything else. Luard does not die. Luard is a infinite stamina deck. And it can now start putting back its crits too. This is very huge. I mean, it's been putting back crits for a while now, but... That... Might be a little bit difficult for Shoujo to deal with, especially because Shoujo Doji is starting to run low on deck. That's one of the things that Shoujo Doji actually, like, it cycles through the deck and thins deck so aggressively that... It does actually run through it very quickly. Yeah, this is a very good game. We're getting to see both the full power of Shoujo Doji and we're also getting to see, like... The ability of Luar to it's like claw its way back. It's like it's like hanging on a cliff. Like, please no, don't chop off my fingers. Yeah, the double draw into like the it was like into crit and the biscotti. And then the drive check of the biscotti, like just double biscotti on its own was so good. Shouldn't the Luar player have three energy? Did he use that for something? I feel like he should have three energy from for this turn. I'm not sure. Yeah, no Persona Ride for Shoujo Doji. The hand for the lower player isn't so huge, but... It's still just enough to uh, make things move. Alright, 18-18. Ooh, are we hitting time here? Oh no, what a good game! It actually ended in timeout. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Man, that's really, really unfortunate. That was such a good game. Yeah, so the thing is that this tournament has nine Swiss rounds. Since it has nine Swiss rounds, they have to really make it move fast. Otherwise, they're they're gonna get kicked out of the venue, I'm assuming. So I'm not sure what uh, time rulings WGP Singapore is using, but in in usual Japanese um, tournaments, it's it's double loss. So oh, that's really unfortunate. They both played so well. They both played really really well, but. Man, it was good to see them both adapt to it. It was very, very close too. And uh, yeah, there was like no slow playing. They both played really, really well. It just goes to show, 25 minutes is not enough. I've been saying this, I've been telling this to people that I that I know at Bushiro 2, I've been telling them 25 minutes is not enough. It is not a beginner-friendly timer for a game that is growing in numbers very rapidly right now. Like, right now, Vanguard's been gaining numbers in tournaments, especially in Asia, like crazy. So at the very least, make the timer 30 minutes. I think this this game really drives that point home, but still, very good set. Round 3 of uh, WGP Singapore, even with that conclusion, they both played really, really well. And uh, huge props to both of them. Very, very nice.